الله نحمده ونستعين به ونسترشده ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أوصيكم عباد الله وإياي بتقوى الله وأحضكم على طاعته وأنهاكم عن مخالفته وأستفتح بالذي هو خير وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد dear brothers and sisters today I would like to share with you some reflections on an important topic in our lives in the life of every human being and we all seek it and try to achieve it but some of us has misconception about it and today we will try to see it from an Islamic perspective what I would like to talk to you about today is happiness if you ask anyone on this earth would you like to be happy or sad the answer would be I want to be happy and all of us are after happiness in our lives but as I said earlier there are many ways to look at happiness there are different ways to define it if you ask someone who is poor would you like to be happy and what is happiness for you he would say money if you ask someone who is sick what is happiness for you he would say to you I want to be cured and if you ask someone who failed in his exam he will ask he will tell you I want to succeed in my exam so happiness could mean a lot of things to different people but we need to look at it from an Islamic perspective and in Islam, happiness revolves around being well connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Happiness comes through being good with Allah and that you are con then you will become content in your life. If you look at the topics that we spoke about a minute ago, whether it was wealth or love or being cured from a sickness, these things you may achieve it or you may not achieve it. You could have the mentality and the strength to generate wealth or you may have not. You may have the intellect to study and pass the exam, you may not. But to be near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is open. Happiness through nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is open to every human being, to every creature on this earth. You don't need to be strong. You don't need to be in the best of health. You don't need anything except to have the intent of connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and observing the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so it is in the mercy of Allah that he, make, he made this kind of happiness attainable to every one of us. There is no barrier about this. If we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at all prophets of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if we look at the life of the companions of the prophets, we will see that there were sad moments in their life. Was their life free of what we define as sadness? Was there any point in their life that was free of sadness? No. If you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, you will see it or you can look at it as a series of unhappy moments. Why is that? Because he was given the message by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he was hopeful that his people, those who trusted him and called him the trustworthy, they would believe him, but they didn't. Only few of them believed in him. And he tried his best to call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with little success. He spent 20, 11 years calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Mecca. And he tried at one time to go beyond Mecca. So he went to the nearest town to Taif, which is about 60 kilometers, 40 miles away from Mecca. Imagine yourself 
having been <clears throat> refused by your next of kin, by your clan and tribe, and then you decided to go to another place. And the Prophet وسلم, walked this distance. He didn't drive in a car. He walked 60 kilometers to Tyre, climbing the mountain. And he was hopeful that the people of Tyre will be better than the people of Mecca. But they declined his message. Not even that. They sent after him their children to harass him. And the Prophet وسلم, felt very bad about this event. And he sat in the shade of a wall and he made a prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this prayer shows the essence of happiness, the source of happiness in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Despite many setbacks that came his way, despite many problems that he faced, because the prayer said, Allahumma in lam yakum bika ghadabun alayya fala ubali. I have seen all of this, and it is very saddening for me, but I don't care about it. If you are not angry with me, if this is not a punishment, if this is, if, if this is just a test, then I am very satisfied with it. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued, He didn't say, I want to live all my life in this way. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable him to go through this and to change the situation. He said to Allah, but your acceptance and your, your giving me the comfort is more, but is more liked by me. So this is one point in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are many other points. If you look at the time when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his next of kin, Bani Hashim, were boycotted by the rest of Quraysh. They were told that we will not buy from you or sell you food and we will leave you on your own unless you denounce your son, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his wife also, Khadija, who was his next support, his best support, died at the same time. Again, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through many sad moments in his life. But if you look at his life, would you define him as someone who was sad, who was depressed, or someone who was happy? He definitely was very happy in his life, very content with his life. Why is that? Because of his relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to define happiness around that, not around many things, that are materialistic, <clears throat> that would be available to us sometime in our lives or may not continue with us. There are many things that we know for sure will not continue with us. If you are young and healthy, can you guarantee that you will remain young and healthy for the rest of your life? If you are beautiful and many of our girls define happiness as being the most beautiful girl, can you guarantee that this beauty will continue with you for the rest of your life? These are things that will not continue with you. But the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if built on a sound foundation, will continue with you, whether you are 20 or you are 80. It will bring happiness to you, whether you are very rich or you are very poor. And we see this in the life of the Prophet and his companions. Why the happiness came to them? For many reasons. One of it is that they realized that the sadness that came through to them is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen for them. They have done their best, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected for them this. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost his son, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was holding him in his hands, and the son was breathing his last breath on this earth. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam expressed his sadness, but at the same time he said, وَلَا نَقُولُ إِلَّا مَا يُرْضِي رَبَّنَا We shall say nothing but that would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the happiness comes 
from the relationship with Allah and knowing that he will not let you down. If you have done your work, but you failed the exam, then you realize that this is something beyond your capability. And the same applies. If, you are, if your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good, then the happiness will come to you. Because you realize, if today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took something away from you, tomorrow he will give you more. In the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his wife, Umm Salama, her first husband, Abu Salama, died. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught her to say, Allahumma khjurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayran minha. O oh Allah, give me the ajr, give me the reward for this that happened to me. And give me even better than what I lost. And the lady said, when the Prophet taught me this, I asked myself, who could be better than my late husband Abu Salama? Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married her. And she said, I realized that this hadith, this prayer, there are many things beyond my imagination. And Abu, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was definitely better than Abu Salama radiallahu an. So when we are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on a strong footing, then we realize that whatever he took today, he will give tomorrow. And sometimes later we realize that the distress that we went through was indeed a blessing in a disguise. And we need to realize this in our lives. The second point, we must realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very merciful and very generous. And if we lose something, if we miss something, if we feel sad about something, the compensation will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from his creatures, not from his servants. It will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and in the hereafter. And to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سُعِدُوا Those who were given happiness, they lived in paradise eternal life. This is the ultimate happiness. Happiness on this earth could come and go in a moment. But happiness in the hereafter is eternal. You will live all your life as you like it and rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beyond your imagination. So the happiness comes to us from our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Happiness comes to believers through prayers also. When you are sad, you want to bring happiness to your heart and you want to vent the feelings that you have in your heart. Usually you do this by talking to a friend, talking to a relative, talking to a spouse, and usually this would bring some comfort to your heart. But the best comfort would come. The best happiness will come from talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we have seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing, he always expressed his trust in Allah, and he always sought the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and happiness to him came through this. When we are talking about all of this, we realize also that in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fun, which is part of happiness, had its place. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a serious person. He was not joking all the time, but his life was not free of jokes, not free of touches that would bring happiness to the heart of other people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, when he would go to a child, he would ask him about his bird. He would not say to him, talk to him about Islam and the five pillars of Islam. He would try to bring happiness to this young kid by talking to him about something that is dear to his heart. We know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sometimes would joke with people. A woman came to him and she asked him to give her a camel. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, I will give you the son of the camel. And the woman thought 
that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was giving, going to give her a young camel that was no use for her in her trip. And she kept asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what can I do with the son of the camel? And the Prophet jokingly would say to her, I will give you only the son of the camel. And later the Prophet explained to her, he said to her, every camel is a son of a camel. He is not coming by himself to this life. So this is the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would bring happiness to the heart of people. By giving them the glad tidings, by showing them a personal touch in, in the, that is common between him and her and, and, the, and the, them. This is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also enjoyed his life. And if we look at all of this, the happiness again came to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and came to his Sahaba. Some of his Sahaba were poor and they were very happy in their lives. They were happy because they realized that they differentiated between the needs and the wants. What they need is the basics. What they want, if you leave your soul to go after what you want, then the whole earth would not be enough for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us in the Quran against those who are always in need. They have something that could not be satisfied. And among them, the, the disbelievers were always among those people who always felt that wealth is the most important aspect in their lives and that they did not think about the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of this, they led unhappy life on this earth and they will be leading unhappy life in the hereafter. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين An important part of happiness is social interaction and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as a human being very dependent on social interaction with each other. And when we look at the teachings of Islam, it not only acknowledges this, but guides us always to achieve happiness through the proper interaction. First of all, we are told to treat each other in a good way, in a balanced way, in a nice way and to support each other with the purpose of not only guidance, but with the purpose of bringing happiness to the heart of each other. This is why the Prophet wasallam, when he listed the duties of brotherhood among Muslims, he said, if your brother invited you to a dinner or to, a, an, a, to an occasion, answer his call, go and attend. And this is why he said, if a brother lost a dear one to, to death, you should go and condole him. This is part of the bringing the happiness to the hearts of those around you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially on happy occasions like Eid, he ordered us to bring happiness to everyone around us. One, of, one way to bring happiness is Sadaqatul Fitr. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to give money. What was the purpose of giving sadaqatul fitr to those around us? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they should not feel isolated. They should not beg on that day. Let them stay happy and completely satisfied so they will share the happiness that those who are well-to-do sharing in the society around them. Even the Prophet went further. When he asked the Muslim ladies to attend Eid prayers, some of them explained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this is a day of Eid where people put their best dresses, but I may not have the dress that is suitable for this occasion. The Prophet addressed other ladies and he said to them, why some of you who have more than one dress lend a dress to her sister 
so she can come and attend the Eid prayer. What was the purpose of all of this? To bring happiness to the heart of everyone in the Muslim community. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you look at the essence of his life, it was to bring happiness in a true perspective to the heart of every human being by showing them the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and telling them to follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to attain happiness and prosperity in this life and in the hereafter. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the best ways in our lives. Allahumma jma'na ala ma yurdiq wahul baynana wa bayna ma'asiq waj'alna min al-mutahabbin fiq. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذ أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم لا تدأ لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم عاف مبتلانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اجعل الجنة مثواهم ومثوانا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وبك عمن سواك عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاه